Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Now, on the 22nd of March 2019, I published this video, uh, If Gravity Can Do This, What Is Gravity? Uh, what is Cause and Effect? And uh, a few weeks later, on April the 5th, one Karl R. Jaschulk, uh, a German chap, wrote to uh, the MFMP on the MFMP's Facebook site and said that the work of Xu Wenju that I was referencing to was also included in a 2018 published book by Constantin Mail, and that book is here. Uh, I purchased it and uh, have recently got it, and I've uh, read through it. There's some interesting material in there, uh, and it has a couple of things uh, from Ode, so it's quite nice to see that some other people are thinking along these lines. Uh, but the thing that really caught my attention was just in the preface, and that is this. And it was a quote uh, from a New York Times article by uh, Nikola Tesla. And what uh, Constantin Mail is uh, suggesting that quote is alluding to is that uh, Tesla was suggesting that he had established by 1899 uh, uh, something but both mathematically and uh, by experiment that would be akin to neutrinos. And uh, I will go into that article, which I managed to track down on a uh, sort of... Uh, sales site called Timothy Hughes Rare and Early Newspapers here, um, where they get old newspapers and you can find them and, and they sell them. So they had a couple of uh, screen grabs here, uh, not particularly great quality. And what I did was I took the liberty of reconstructing this article from the scans. The actual paper was sold, so it's not available to purchase. I, I believe you can get uh, uh, access to it on the New York Times website if you have a subscription there. Anyway, I, I reconstructed this, uh, and this is the full article. And what I've done is I've highlighted a few points that I wanted to uh, uh, draw your attention to. So, the article was written, as you can see here, uh, to the New York Times on February the 4th, 1932. And uh, this uh, was published on February the 6th, 1932. So I'm going to read these. It's called The Cosmic Rays. And it says, to the editor of the New York Times, you have given considerable space to the subject of cosmic rays, which seem to have aroused general attention to an unusual degree. Inasmuch as I discovered this wonderful phenomenon and investigated it long before others began their researches, your readers may perhaps be interested in my own findings. The original idea was advanced and discussed by me in a series of articles on rentgen rays and radioactivity published from 1896 to 1898 in the Electrical Review. The results of my discoveries were reported all over the world through the Associated Press. Now, it's interesting, 1896, because if you actually look, Rentogen discovered the uh, uh, X-rays in November the 8th, 1895. So Tesla was hot on the heels of that. And, and moreover, uh, uh, the electron was discovered, uh, it says here, of course, by J.J. Uh, uh, Thompson in 1895. Seven. So this was a really feverish time of discovery. And so he's saying between 1896, uh, which is after the discovery of X-rays or rentogen rays, uh, uh, kind of official because Tesla claims that, uh, you know, he, he's got things that look like he was creating X-rays before then. But rentogen rays at this time um, uh, in 1895. And in, then the year after he started looking at rentogen rays, the electron was discovered. And so this is a very interesting period. So let, let's go on. Um, so, he says here, When radioactivity was discovered, it was thought to be an entirely new manifestation of energy limited to a few substances. I obtained sufficient evidence to convince me that such actions were general and in nature the same as those exhibited by my tubes. In these minute corpuscles, regarding which we are still in doubt, are shot from a highly electrified terminal against a target where they generate rentogen or other rays by impact. Now, this is very, very interesting because he actually refers to particles later down. So we've got inconceivably small particles, and we'll come on to that. And obviously, he will have known that electrons uh, are... Uh, 
these particles, and so he knows what the word particle means, and uh, he's not calling them a ray. He's saying these in these minute, and he's not ca calling them infinitesimal or uh, uh, inconceivably small. He's calling these minute. Now, th this is the word that stuck out to me. I'm going to go right into that. Corpuscles. Now, this was kind of a word that might have been used around uh, uh, the sort of turn of the century for what might be the nucleus of an atom. But it's a very interesting word to me in this context. And that is because the, the word that comes to mind, uh, well, the image that comes to mind when I read corpuscles is that of uh, a red blood cell like this. So you have this sort of toroid with this thin area and actually the, the, the slightly... Uh, kind of like a donut, but with a little bit in the middle. But if you look at them uh, from above, they look like this. And this looks strikingly like the strike marks that uh, was observed by William Bostick and by uh, um, Kenneth Shoulders and by... Uh, uh, who else shall I say? Um, by... Um, uh, Takaki Matsumoto. And... It, in the impact of EVOs. And the actual context is correct here as well, because he's actually creating Renshigen rays in the standard way you do it. You have an electro highly electrolyzed, ca ca uh, electrically charged cathode, and it discharges to an anode, typically with a heavy metal like uh, tungsten, and that produces your uh, X rays for your X ray uh, machine. And so essentially, he's discuss uh, describing something here that's strikingly like a uh, shoulders discharge tube in order to create uh, exotic vacuum objects, which are these toroidal structures, according to many of the people that observed it. And it's not just those people that I mentioned, there are other people as well. And so he's actually referring to them as corpuscles. Now, this is being written in 1932, but he's referring to work that was done in the late 1890s. So this potentially would suggest that uh, Nikola Tesla was aware of the signatures of exotic vacuum objects around 50 years, around 50 years before Bostick took up his work. Now, going on. Now, according to my theory, a radioactive body is simply a target which is continuously bombarded by infinitesimal bullets projected from all parts of the universe. And if this then unknown cosmic radiation should be wholly intercepted, radioactivity would cease. So he's basically saying that uh, if you have a, an interaction between this cosmic ray and a semi-stable atom, then that would c cause the decay process to occur. So, for instance, emission of a beta. And this is essentially what Alexander Parkhamov has demonstrated. When there is a higher intense flux of um, relic neutrinos, of ultra-low um, uh, energy uh, neutrinos, you get an increase in the decay rate of your beta isotope. So... This is extremely fascinating to me because he's suggesting that uh, he, he's observed these processes in the eight, late 1890s. I made some progress in solving the mystery until in 1899 I obtained mathematical and experimental proofs that the sun and other heavenly bodies seem similarly conditioned emit rays of great energy which consist of inconceivably small particles animated by velocities vastly exceeding that of light. This is very interesting to me. He's not see, saying that they are travelling at speeds vastly exceeding the that of light. He's saying that they are animated by velocities vastly exceeding that of light. Now, in the next presentation, I'm going to look at uh, some work by uh, Eugene Podluktonov. And... Uh, Essentially, what you're saying is you've got these spin waves, and there are other papers that talk about this, that can travel through the ether, as you would call it, um, and that they uh, can travel faster than the speed of light. So they are, and Podlikotanov makes a very good argument, which uh, you should really look to take on board, that spinning around it, some, something's own axis does not violate the uh, laws of... Um, uh, uh, relativity, according to Einstein. And, and so uh, 
But he's saying this in 1932. <laughs> um, so great is the penetrative power of these rays that they can traverse thousands of miles of solid matter with but slight diminution of velocity. In passing through space, which is all filled with cosmic dust, they generate a secondary radiation of constant intensity, day and night, and pouring upon the Earth equally from all directions. As the primary rays projected from the uh, suns and stars can pass through distances measured in light years without great diminution of velocity. It follows that whether a secondary ray is generated near a sun or at any distance from it, however great, its intensity is the same. Consequently, if our sun or any other would be snuffed out of existence, it would have no appreciable effect on the secondary radiation. He's describing something that has the properties of uh, neutrinos, it would seem. And so I think the judgment by uh, Constantin Mayer, presented in his book, uh, is uh, uh, in line with my thinking. And uh, I, I think he's, he's right in saying that it's possible uh, that uh, Nikola Tesla was observing these things and describing them in the eight, late 1890s. And uh, what I will say about this book, uh, it's, it's worth a read. It's, it's an easy read. Um, there's a couple of tidbits in there, uh, which I will uh, refer to uh, as as we move forward. Um, but uh, uh, this this is led by looking at a couple of other people's experiments and so forth. Whereas in the case of Alexander Parkhamov, uh, this was uh, in uh, uh, 19, I think it was uh, 88. He was, and I'll check that, in 1988, he was looking at uh, diffraction gratings and he observed a highly penetrating radiation. And that uh, took him forward to investigate uh, uh, ultra low energy neutrinos. And this is uh, an experimental led, his experiment led, uh, experimental led um, uh, research in here. And so I hope that you can join me. I'm very close to launching the Kickstarter. There's a couple more videos I want to release uh, in context. So look out for the next ones. But what I can say is that um, it would appear that uh, Nikola Tesla uh, was describing, in my view, uh, something corpuscles of electrons being emitted from uh, a highly charged cathode striking an anode to produce uh, rentigen rays or X-rays. And that these uh, corpuscles were in fact EVOs, uh, exotic vacuum objects, uh, uh, the description given to uh, these structures uh, by uh, Kenneth Shoulders uh, that uh, was based, uh, his initial work was based on the work of Bostick. But I, 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 I suggest that maybe uh, Bostick didn't start from nowhere and he potentially uh, could have looked at uh, this understanding of, of Nikola Tesla. So thank you for your time. Uh, I ju just want to say that uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Like I say, I'm going to be pr producing some more uh, quick fire uh, videos that are very, very important to the understanding understanding of um, the whole of uh, the new fire in my personal opinion uh, and so you want to look out for those so thank you for your time I'll see you in the next video